Hello and welcome to the video. In this video we'll be taking a look at the new Inkberg temperature controller that features Wi-Fi control. Quick disclaimer, this unit was provided to me for the purpose of this review by the manufacturer. As always, I made no promises that I would review the product and made them aware that I only feature reviews on my channel of products that I feel that are worthwhile. Here is the review, so let's find out why. Inkberg controllers have been very popular within the homebrew communities of the world for some years, mostly due to their good quality and features for a very affordable price. For those of you that have been owners of the regular ITC308 controller, this one will feel totally familiar, but with the added handy feature of Wi-Fi control via a free iOS or Android smart app. This makes it suited for control from a distance and due to its nature it pairs very well with a Wi-Fi connected hydrometer like the Plato or Tilt, allowing you to adjust temperature based on gravity. Some examples of this will be raising the temperature of a lager fermentation after 50% attenuation is reached for a faster but just as clean fermentation. Raising temperature for a diacetyl rest in the final days of fermentation. Gradually rising temperatures for Belgian styles for added ester flavours. And of course lowering for cold crashing and more. Not only is this useful for when you're away from home, but it is also convenient when you simply do not want to move from your armchair. They don't call it a lazy boy for nothing. Before we move on to some video of this in action, here are some vital statistics so that you can see the capabilities of the product directly from the manufacturer. So you can see here that it has dual relay output, a good amount of electrical load capacity, temperature calibration, compressor delay protection, temperature alarms and a good level of temperature accuracy. So let's take a closer look at the product. This product is supplied in the regular Inkberg box format. Inside the box, the things that you will find first are the instructions and a warranty card for one year. Do not be put off by this relatively short warranty though. I've been using Inkberg products for some years and have yet to run into an issue. So here is some video footage of the temperature controller itself. As you can see, everything button display wise is set out in a very easy way to read and also to use. The plug sockets are also labelled very clearly so that you make sure that you have the right thing in the right socket. The temperature probe is on a nice long cable of 2 meters or just over 6.5 feet. The input power cable you see here is 1.5 meters or 5 feet in length. Like all Inkwo products, the quality feel is very good. Naturally the version of the product that I'm using here is for the EU power supply, but versions are also available for US, UK and down under. Like all Inkberg products, it is also very easy to use. Operation with the Wi-Fi version adds two choices of operation. Let us have a look at manual first. On the unit itself, if you hold down the set button, you will enter the settings. This allows you to change different values for both heating and cooling separately, alarm settings also both ways, temperature calibration, compressor delay times for fridges and sync between Celsius and Fahrenheit. As you can see here, these settings are letter coded, but is very, very quickly learned. For the most part, you will stay with these general settings anyway. Once you are happy with these settings, press and hold down the set button again, and even if you unpower this, they will be permanently stored. During normal operation, you will only be changing temperature. The way to do this is to give the set button a quick press and then use the up and down buttons accordingly until you reach your desired temperature. Press the set button again quickly and your temperature is locked in. And then we have the Wi-Fi app. I downloaded this and set up the iOS version without any fuss at all, very fast and easy. Here is a split view showing my phone screen side by side with the controller. On my phone you can see the main control screen. This is currently blue because the unit is cooling. If I touch on the SV section shown here on the screen then I can adjust the temperature. So let's set the new temperature to 19 degrees Celsius so that we can have some heating going on. As you can see here tweaking these temperatures is quick and easy. The response time from the app to the controller is also very fast. 
Because I adjusted to a higher temperature, we have now entered heating mode and the control screen is now red. We can also adjust all of our general settings from this app. You can see my chosen values here. I would suggest that you experiment with these to find out what works best for you in your situation. From this app, you can also track your temperatures by using this temp trend graph that you can see here. Do not pay attention to my data here. This is not from an actual fermentation. Finally, here is a good suggestion relating to the temperature probe. Naturally, for a temperature controller to work properly, we want the probe to pick up an accurate temperature of our wall. It is totally unnecessary to place the probe in your actual wall. The method of placing it in water within the same fridge separate from the fermentation vessel is also not a good one for total accuracy. What I recommend is the following. Plumber's putty is pretty much sold worldwide. It is used to temporarily fix leaking water pipes and much more. To buy this, just head to your nearest DIY or hardware store. One really great thing is that it sticks to your temperature probe very, very easily, and then when pushed onto your fermentation vessel, it transfers very accurate temperature readings. It is also multi-use, so once your fermentation is over and you want to put everything away, simply remove the putty and put it back in the tub, ready for when you need it next. Cheap, simple and effective, just how I like it. This now brings this video to a close. If you have any questions, then please let me know via YouTube or Facebook. I do hope that you found this video to be useful, interesting and enjoyable. If appropriate, then please like this video on YouTube. And if you've not done so already, then please subscribe. I regularly post new content. Happy brewing.